All right. Welcome back to Diesel Talk. Been a while. Hopefully you guys are having a good uh, holiday season. Um, obviously, we're recording this right before Christmas time. But if you're watching it after, well, hope you had a good Christmas there. How's that? Uh, been a little busy. Uh, a lot of things going on. Uh, but the subject for today is engine oil. Okay, big one. Oh, God, controversial. Just Google or use YouTube and try to figure out what's going on with engine oil. And that's a big controversial item. But the thing is, if you're going to make, I mean, let's be straight up here. If you're going to make a decision on what's good, what's bad about engine oil, and you think you're a specialist engine oil, um, do an educated one, please. Okay. In other words, just don't say, well, well, it ran great on my truck, you know, and if it didn't run great on your truck or whatever, you know. But then again, you know, as a shop, we kind of make this joke because we have these customers that swear by a product or swear by this, but then those might be the same customers that actually say that the truck runs faster after car wash, you know, but anyways, engine oil. Uh, let's talk a little about engine oil. Does it affect after treatment? Yes. One of the biggest controversies going on is extended life oil changes that a lot of guys are doing. In other words, they're extending the mileage that they're doing. And one of the cheap insurances you ought to keep in mind is, changing that oil periodically. In other words, maintenance. You look at any truck that's gone long miles. I mean, we're talking about over 200,000 miles. It isn't surprising that one of the key things that a, a the driver or the owner of the vehicle does is that they service that vehicle regularly. That's the secret. I mean, my power stroke 6.0 that I own, I mean, we've been religious about changing that oil. And let me tell you, it's like, it's, she's got, I haven't used it much lately, but it's got about, what is it, 118,000 and like blow buys next to nothing on it. Because like I said, we've been good about changing oil, but that truck doesn't have after treatment. So the question begs is that what's going on with after treatment? After treatment, in case you don't know what it is, is the use of a diesel oxidation catalyst, particulate filter, and the newer, newer models use SCR, which is the deaf fluid system. And, and that's another thing. So after treatment is key. Uh, one of the things you got to realize, I mean, we look at the new uh, Fords, for example, with six sevens, along with the Cummins, Ram Cummins, along with the Duramax. Uh, you got to understand we're having a horsepower war. You know, we're at 445 horsepower over a thousand foot pounds of torque. Those are big truck numbers. OK, so in this case, if you own one of these trucks or you own an older model, uh, that's OK. But the thing is, the key to lung life and issues with the after treatment is to actually have a good periodic maintenance of, you know, what's going on with the engine oil. So let's get this thing going. So in this case, you understand, you know, the, what, why this presentation is understand the role engine oil has on these modern diesel powered engines. I mean, these high horsepower trucks impact it has on them on after treatment, like I just said, you know, and what are the engine oil certifications you ought to be aware of? In other words, which oil should you use? Because people often ask me and you'll see me repeat it again is that, hey, Tony, what do you use on your truck on engine oil? I said, whatever's on sale or whatever we get in bulk. As long as it's certified oil and you change it periodically, you know, religiously, you're good about it. You know, really, you don't have to worry about the brand of oil that you use. But, you know, people tend to argue that. And uh, how frequently should you change it? You know, some people call for 3,000. Some people call for 10,000. You know, it all depends. But it's like my old professor used to say, and please give it heat. It's like, you never can change your oil enough. That was something that he kind of told us when it comes to engine oil. And then the use of additives. The question begs is that with the use of after treatment, is that additive um, certified? In other words, is it also cat friendly? We like to say the word cat mean for catalyst. So there's a lot of junk being sold out there and a lot of people get brainwashed on it. So the question begs, you know, what's going on? But with the introduction of engine oil on the, uh, excuse me, introduction of these trucks with the F-150, the Silverado 1500, the Ram 1500, um, you're going to see now the use of an FA4 certified oil. And you better know this because FA4 is not recommended for engines such as the ones I just mentioned, the 6.6 Duramax, the 6.7 Power Stroke 6.7, and also the Ram Cummins 6.7. They're not approved for that. So the FA4 at this time, subject to change, but in this case, is being used for the smaller diesels, those V6s and the inline fours that are being introduced or have been introduced already in the truck market or light duty truck market. So the oil that's currently recommended, you know, as of December here of 2020, uh, you're going to notice that CK4 is the certification you ought to know. Uh, CJ4, CJ as in John, was used before the CK4 certification that was better referred to as the low ash oil. And that low ash oil meant that when you burn the soot inside of a diesel particulate filter, you know, particulates, in case you don't know, is soot. 
again, educate yourself on this stuff. But in this case, that is CK4. And now before that, CJ4, those were low ash, A-S-H, low ash oil, because when you burn soot, it turns into ash. So as we discussed before in previous videos, when you burn soot, it turns into ash. So these are recommended or pretty much you got to use them on after treatment equipped trucks. So in this case, 1030 is very popular now. The 1540 slowly being phased out, but there's still truck manufacturers. Like, you know, I just checked uh, Ram Cummins. They're still calling for 1540. So does Duramax. But as of 2020, I haven't checked yet, but they're still recommending that 1030. I mean, we'll talk more about the weights here in a sec, but. But when we describe a diesel's engine oil performance, the matters become complicated and the use of the wrong type of diesel engine oil can damage some diesel engine components, such as the particulate filters, you know, not supposed to happen, and exhaust treatment systems. So in the good old days, I mean, back in the mid 50s, you know, in the, until the mid 80s, diesel engine performance was specified by either the American Petroleum Institute, which is API, you know, <clears throat> and in this case, um, excuse me, uh, the service classification APICC or APICD. In other words, what all that meant is that engine had some kind of yardstick and had to get an approval process. Now that has been changing. I've been seeing some videos on YouTube. I like to keep myself up to speed with what's being talked about because a lot of people are claiming that API is now a marketing thing. You pay money and you get your certification. Um, but there's got to be some kind of certification that's been out there and that has been used out there is that donut that you can see here on the diagram here on the right hand side. But due to controversy going on, I'll give you an example with four, but a lot of manufacturers are now actually bringing out their manufacturer. I mean, let's look at this Dello bottle right here. And in this case, if I blow it up a little bit, you're going to see here that Caterpillar, Renault, Cummins, Mac, Volvo, you know, all these big diesel players are now calling for a certain certification and must be approved by them. So in order for them to put their names here, they got to be approved. So it, again, it meets the performance requirements of these companies. So if it's not good enough for you to use the donut symbol to know that it's good quality oil, obviously you can look to see if it's certified. Um, for example, the Valvoline Premium has always been uh, liked by Cummins, for example. So in this case, you're going to see that. So you better look at the bottle you're buying. So, you know, what's going on there? So engine oils, for example, for the old two stroke diesels on the Detroits was determined by sulfated ash level and the engine oil meeting the APICC was usually used. In other words, there was a certification process that had to be done. But like I said, you got to read the bottle. Here we look at a Valvoline bottle here. And in this case, we can see the certifications. And here's the famous one that I'll talk about here, the 4WSS M2C171-F1. In other words, when CK came out, Ford said no. I'll, I'll show you that here in a little bit. And there's a YouTube from Ford on that a video on that you can watch. But in this case, what I'm trying to say is, do you know the certifications? Are you buying it? Why? You know, what's the oil you're using? But again, it's not just the oil you use. It's also your oil change intervals and the maintenance you maintain. So as diesel engines developed, there became a need for higher performance in engine oils to provide better control excuse me, better control of oil consumption, piston ring belt cleanliness, oil system sludging, and piston top land deposits. In other words, the oil had a job to do, and it, and it lived in a very aggressive environment within a diesel engine. So from 85 and onward, API service classifications from the CE, C4, CF, C2, CG4 were introduced to meet increasing demands for control of high temperature piston deposits, valve train wear. I mean, the list goes on, oxidation resistance, and even soot accumulation in the oil. Always ask yourself something, you know, what makes uh, oil black? You know, I've been, some of you may have changed oil in your trucks. And next thing you know, you look at the, uh, at the oil afterwards, you check the level, it's still black. You're like, wait a minute, I just put, a, you know, 12 quarts, 10 quarts, 15 quarts in this truck and it's still black, you know, did I change the oil? Yes, you did. So it begs the question, what's the suit accumulation in there? So later API diesel engine classifications, such as API, CH4, the CI4 and CJ4 were recently introduced. And then the CK4 were developed with a focus on requirements of EGR, exhaust gas recirculation, and DPF and catalyst systems and engine introduced in the early 2000s. In other words, we had to meet the newer emission controls that were put into these engines along with EGR, the use of after treatment. So other manufacturers, uh, for example, like I mentioned earlier, the OEMs, the Caterpillar, the Cummins, the Detroit diesels of the world, they all have developed their own OEM engine oil specification. So some manufacturers 
even specify a maximum sulfated ash sulfur slash phosphorus level in engine oil. And these engine oils are referred to as low saps. Okay, so they got their thing going. In other words, it's pretty much gone all over the place. There used to be APIAC, SAE oil that was approved pretty much by all the manufacturers, but everybody's decided to start their own thing. I mean, Volkswagen has been claiming their oil engine oil certification as well for a while, you know, the TDIs. So don't invent the wheel when the wheel's already been invented, you know. I know you want the best for your truck. You want to buy the best stuff for your truck. If that's that's okay. But in this case, you know, maintenance is something I need to sell you, you know. Every time we talk about synthetic oils, for example, when we talk about synthetics, we often talk about, you know, extended engine oil life. In other words, I put synthetic oil, I can get 10, 15,000 miles out of it. Is that a wise idea? You know, it's up to you. Again, hey, you break a truck, the more it is for us as a business. But the thing is, we want your trucks. We've always lived with the philosophy here as a business has been, you know, hey, you know, we want your truck to go a long time. So what's the secret is, again, the engine oil changes you know the maintenance so so have you been making your decision on what oil to use and when to change it and what's it based on marketing maybe that idiot that might be working behind no, no offense to some of the auto parts guys but let's face it, a lot of auto parts guys have zero shop experience zero education i mean you ask them for a certain component they don't even know what the hell you're talking about you know what's the difference between a, a phillips screwdriver and a crescent wrench you know no insult but you know this is the reality of the quality of auto parts person that's behind the counter you know and in this case you know the service manual you know, the owner's manual, that might be a good telltale, but what is the overall condition of your engine? See, no two engines are the same because I don't know the history of that engine. So how is it driven? I mean, does it see a lot of idle time? Those decisions you're going to have to be based on, you know, what? In other words, I'm going to use this new product. I'm going to use this product. But then for the longest time, how long have diesel engines been around? And what has been the average use of engine oil? In other words, what is the best oil for me to use? You know, but it all depends, again, is it certified? You know, you got to have a minimum standard. That minimum standard is, do you have at least a donut symbol in it? And are you changing that oil religiously? So, so at the weight engine oil weight, I pulled this off the internet so you can see great, uh, great article I got some stuff from just to show you what's out there. So just Google and educate yourself. But 1540 has been used for a long time. But then now Ford is recommending 10W30 and 5W30. And then we see other manufacturers calling for 5W40, 030, and even 040 for colder temperatures. So therefore, we're now starting to see some type of full-blown need for a synthetic base, which is not a problem, you know. For example, you know, I got a friend's car, the gasoline calls for 020, you know. So that has changed. But the thing is, you know, always remember viscosity is the resistance to flow. And just to recap, you do know what the W stands for, right? The W, what's the W stand for? The W stands for winter, you know, ratio of cold to hot, you know, and always remember viscosity is the resistance to flow. That's what it means. Let's educate ourselves. Resistance to flow, that's viscosity. So therefore, the less the number, the smaller the number, the, the less viscous it is, the less resistance it is to flow. Obviously, the higher the number, the thicker it gets, you know. So in this case, you know, 1540 can still be used in many manufacturers, but again, the temperature range that it works at, you know, it's better with cold for those guys that get that stuff called snow that we don't get here in Vegas. You know, it's okay to run as low as a 030, 040, but again, it all depends how that engine's in, in shape and you know, how good of a shape is it. So the one thing, this is one important slide that I put up here comparing, you know, a diesel engine. This is pretty much 2001 and later, I guess. But the thing is, the question begs, you know, what is the engine oil working with nowadays? I mean, when you talk about that engine I just talked about earlier, the Power Stroke 67 using up to, you know, for, it produces, excuse me, up to 445 horsepower. It's like, you know, there's a payment to be paid here for power. In other words, you know that saying, you got to pay to play. And in this case, you're working with higher boost levels. I mean, we're exceeding over 30 pounds of boost, which is a lot. You know, we got EGR systems, we got after treatment systems. So on one side of the engine, we're having a hard time breathing because there's EGR gas. And then on the outlet of the engine, we got all these catalysts and these diesel particulate filters along with your SER system. So therefore it's heavily congested and constipated this poor motor. So this piston is going up and down, right? Fighting, you know, back pressures in the exhaust as it pushes the exhaust out the exhaust stroke and then it's having a hard time sucking air you know and it's so therefore those rings and that piston is taking a punishment but if you know your engine you understand that the engine oil film is actually 
the lubricant and the sealer that's between the rings and the cylinder walls. So in this case, with all this going on, and then to top it off, you know, you got post injections on a lot of these engines, like the Power Stroke 67 and the Cummins 67s too as well. Those are injecting fuel into the exhaust on the exhaust stroke. So that means we're injecting into the exhaust. So that piston is seeing that. So now we're washing some of the walls and the things go worse and worse. In other words, what is being stressed? The engine oil more than ever. As we want more power, we got more boost, you know, we got more fueling. And it also, we have, you know, this constipation issue and this also congestion issue. The engine oil is getting the bulk of the punishment. So it isn't surprising that some motors that are, you know, we have seen, you know, we had one customer bring us in and swears, and I believe them, that within 1,100 miles, the oil package was gone. In other words, we had the oil tested and it was gone. I mean, it was just no more lubrication because of the excessive blow by, excessive wear and tear in the cylinders. So in this case, it begs the question, what was the maintenance on that engine, you know? So, you know, you, you look at what companies are doing, like Ford, you know, Ford Motor Company, and there's a video out there, you know, talking about the CK4 WSS designation, but they rejected the CK4 when it was out. And in this case, they came up with their own designation. So if you want to, and I'll show you the website here in a little bit, WSS M2C171-F1. You think they could have made it easier, I know, in terms of the number. But in this case, API FA4 engine oil, and please read here carefully can be found in 5W30 and 10W30 diesel viscosity grades. The API FA4 cannot, cannot be used in super duty diesel engines, which is the 6.7, the 6.4, 6.0, the 7.3, and even the 4.5 and the 3.2 that are used in the transit vans. So therefore use Motorcraft, well, obviously they're gonna say Motorcraft, but they need to use a WSS approved diesel engine all meeting that, you know, 171-F1 certification from Ford. So Ford, said, you know, you know, this is a, a problem here because they saw, as you can see in the video, they saw premature engine wear, especially on the long term. So therefore, they're saying now that the FA4 that has come out is for the F-150 with a 3 diesel engine and the Transit with a two-liter two liter diesel engine. So that's what you're going to find. So again, but this is not supposed to be used. Like I said earlier, repeating myself, the FA4 is not for the 6.7, 6.0s and all the other bigger V8 power strokes. So there is a website which you can copy and paste there, not copy and paste, but you can write it down or you can Google it if you so choose. And there's a list of approved oils. But all you got to do is when you look at oils, you can try to see, like you saw in the Valvoline bottle I showed you earlier, if the WSS 171F1 designation is used. So that's what we're talking about there. So there you will find the list and make sure that your engine oil meets the Ford requirement because Ford has done their homework in getting again, their oil to be certified. So this is the page you'll get to and you click on that highlighted uh, link and that'll she, uh, give you the link. So many oils will surprise you when you look at this list here will not be certified and uh, that's a problem. So therefore you need to get an oil. If you really pick about your oil, you know, you need to find which brand you like and see if that oil is part of WSS 171 list, you know, so there you go. Now, I don't want to sound contradictory to you, but I'm looking out for you in terms of my truck, everybody's truck that I deal with. And I understand here is a, it's a little bit like four or five years old, but Duramax on the GM side, as you can see here, has been calling for 10,000 mile change intervals, you know, and then I move over to Cummins 6.7 and they're calling for what? 15,000 oil change intervals in the early ones, they were 7,500. I'll be honest with you, that's insane. Bottom line, that's insane, you know? And in this case, uh, we're calling between, if this truck does a lot of stop and go, stop and go, we're saying at least three to 4,000 mile oil change in holes. And I don't take it lightly, believe me, I know it costs money, but actually it's cheap insurance because you look at the cost of these engines nowadays, you know, you're talking easy 10 grand and over, depending on what you get, but yeah, you're talking about a lot of money for an engine. So to me, you know, engine oil is an investment that I continue to invest on my engine to keep it running good. So in this case, when you're talking about and you're and don't give me flack about it, because, you know, this is not an easy decision I made. So if you're going to make a comment, keep it to yourself when it comes to this, because I fight the fight and I've seen this. But then again, you know, like many people, you know, I work in this. I've been working in this industry ever since I've been like a teenager and I don't take it lightly. And I have actually, you know, I've been to school for this, you know. 
got a degree too, but I'm not going to brag about that. But the bottom line is, you know, I don't take it lightly. It's a cost. Why do we fight to change that oil frequently? I don't know. You're willing to buy shit that probably don't even work. Yes, I said that word. But in this case, the bottom line is, you know, if this truck sees a lot of highway time, you know, we pretty, pretty much say every 5,000 miles. But if it's stop and go every three to 4,000, and I know 15 quarts and a filter is a lot of money. But, you know, it's cheap insurance because we see that advantage. We've had, we have had people that, customers that have, have over 300,000 miles on their trucks. And you see they're not having all these issues with after treatment and all this and that. It's because a lot has to do with frequent A, fuel filter changes, and also B, oil changes. Can't say enough about that. And that's what I'm trying to say. You don't want to listen and don't listen. But, you know, when I hear a customer say, well, I've gone through three motors and 100,000 miles, I go, that's a hit and a half of your ass. You ought to know better. Bottom line, you ought to know better. And in this case, oil changes are the secret to longer engine life and fewer issues with after treatment. So I, I kind of look at some trucks with 180,000 miles. They got blow by galore. You take the oil cap off on a, like even a 6.4, and it's just billowing a lot of, you know, blow by gas. And you're like, well, I use that extended life. I change the oil every 10,000 miles. I'm like, well, what the hell did you expect to happen here, man? I mean, the bottom line is these engines are stressed. You're working the hell out of them. They're getting hot. There's a lot of heat exchange taking place there, not to mention they're dealing with the after treatment when it comes to regeneration. So in this case, the secret is to change the oil. There, I said it. Learn it. Get it done. I mean, I'm looking after your well-being, and in this case, we want the well-being of your truck. But in this case, it's okay to change that oil rather frequently. And, you know, oil goes on sale all the time, you know. So in this case, you can stock up and then wait for your next oil change. But it's cheap insurance when you look at the price of other maintenance and please don't be one of those people i've had customers like that i told them you know you need to go and what i mean by that is you tell me they need these oil change intervals and they're like you know i just you know, I, you know they get all you know they don't want to spend the money on that but yet you're spending money on other crap that you don't need on the truck so that is very important so when you look at oil okay just to give you a little bit more education when they do analysis they look at soot they look at oxidation nitration and sulfation so in this case, it's a lot of things that they're being checked and you're welcome to freeze this slide and read it. And this comes from, you know, a customer that does analysis. I'm just a company that does analysis. So, you know, it also brings up, what did you add to the oil? You put an additive in it. You know, there are good additives and there are bad additives, but the question begs, you know, what does that affect the engine oil itself? So in this case, does it even poison the catalyst? In other words, can that have an effect on your after treatment system? So. But always remember, the first one that I target always is soot. You know, excessive soot can shorten engine life and is very abrasive, you know. So what can I tell you? You know, there's a lot to look at with engine oil. So, you know, testing is very important. You know, like I just said, there's a better view of it. Again, you can read it. But when we run uh, regeneration, <clears throat> it isn't surprising to get smoke. You can see a truck that will run a regeneration, but some of them come really black. I mean, we see a lot of junk coming out. This is a Duramax that we're doing a regen on, and it isn't surprising. This is a nice one, but it isn't surprising to see one with major black smoke. So a lot has to do with how much of that engine oil has been burned through the process of the crankcase ventilation system. You see, closed crankcase ventilation system take those blow-by gases that has oil content on it. It's separated a little bit, but it gets burnt, but that affects the after-treatment system, and that's what we're looking at there. So there are other variables that affect your engine oil. Temperature, air quality, obviously humidity, the quality of fuel that you use to, water content, contamination, exposure to other elements. Like for example, when we have sent oil analysis in the past, it's amazing how the oil analysis will come back with a heavy silica content and with a silica uh, sand in other words. So in this case, that sand is going to go ahead and uh, pretty much be in the engine oil. I mean, you could have good filtration, but the bottom line is gonna get in there eventually. So in this case, that's normal for us, but another reason to periodically change that engine oil. But always remember the crankcase ventilation, in case you don't know, let me just give you a quickie, is the gases that escape around, as you can see here, they, skip, they escape around the rings, that's normal. But as these rings get stuck or they get more wear and tear on them or poor engine oil, that's lost its package of lubricity, it isn't surprised to get more blow by. So where that blow by go? Well, it actually gets, you know, back into the intake and it gets sucked in and it gets burnt. 
So what happens is that it goes into the after treatment, these burnt gases, and that's what can poison a catalyst if it's not good quality oil, and it has excessive blow by gases in it. So the bottom line is the main problem that we have with today's diesel is the fact that they tend to generate blow by gases as wear and tear and inadequate maintenance is done. So what can you do? Change the oil periodically, like I said. I'm not saying change it every 500 miles, you know, at least every three to 4,000 if you see stop and go. And if it sees a lot of highway, you know, not to exceed 5,000, you know, but 10,000, really? No, that's not good. So we've had a customer actually come in, excuse me, uh, actually come in. Oh, God, excuse me. Um, we've had customers come in with actually um, huge blow by. And there are products that help unstick the rings that we use that we've had pretty good luck with. And that's another art, uh, video I'll show, but that's the BG-109. But in this case, um, you know, a lot has to do to prevent a lot of this stuff is A, maintain the engine, keep it running correctly. So if you have an issue, check engine light comes on, address it. You know, don't keep driving it. And a lot has to do with, again, the quality of oil that you use too. So, you know, like I said, we told you a list, we told you where to look at, and we just told you about what causes some of that blow by issues, which also will cause low compression as well. So something to be aware about. So that's the 109, which we'll tell you more about later in another video. But remember, like I said at the beginning of this presentation, you can get a lot of ash accumulation if you have the wrong oil that's being burnt in there. Because remember, it's normal through time to see some oil being burnt, you know. And in this case, it affects your diesel particulate filter. So, and we'll talk more in detail about that. So, so what have we learned? Well, what we have learned is that, you know, I hope you have learned, is, you know, there's a lot going on with oil. So if you're not convinced with API, with the CK4, or the WSS for a Ford product, you really need to know what's the best oil based on what is certified was not certified. So if, you, if you're a GM person, look for the GM certification if it meets GM requirements. The owner's manual will have it. Ford, I just told you about in this video, WSS, the F1 certification you can look for. And then if you're dealing with a Cummins, you know, you look for a Cummins certified oil like the Valvoline Premium Blue, whatever. So, but there are other things that affect, you know, and in this case is engine operating condition, prolonged idle period, vehicle loaded it, all the time. It's always working hard, towing as well. And the climate it's operating in, you know, is it cold? Is it hot? And the climate will affect. And in this case, you know, think about what's the best maintenance you can do. Some diehard fleet operators, they do religious testing of their oil, you know, send it out for testing. I often question that. And in this case, some is good, some is bad, but it's based on whose standards, you know. So in this case, is 10,000, 15,000 oil change intervals realistic? Honestly, no. From all the stuff that we have seen, and like, like I said, I don't take it lightly, that's way too much. In other words, the most I would like to see is 5,000 miles, but some guys say, well, our fleet's been running fine. It's been running, but the thing is, what is the engine life that you're looking for? Let me rephrase, and this is a very important point to conclude this here. If I get, if I have a Power Stroke 6.7, I have a Duramax, you know, L5, L5P, you know, the newest Duramax, I got the Cummins 6.7, you know, how long should that engine go before we need to, you know, it tears down, it needs to be building? 100,000 miles, 200,000 miles? Because let me tell you, the million mile mortar is a thing of the past. With all the after treatment, with all the congestion and all the constipation this poor engines have, that's a thing of the past. But what can we do to get at least over 300,000 miles? You know, we want to change that all religiously. Because again, when you look at a 99 or even a 96 diesel engine, you compare it now to a 2020 motor, night and day difference. Horsepower is phenomenal now, but you know all the emissions that we have on them is really playing havoc. So when I see people bitching and complain about their after treatment, they want to delete when they can't delete. You know what can you do to extend that to make it better? Is to actually change that oil religiously, at least not exceeding 5k. You know, and I got my reasons behind it when it comes because it's based on experience and based on what we have seen with analysis. But you make the choice. But if you're going to do it, don't be stupid. And I say don't be stupid. Educate yourself on what's the oil that's best to use for your vehicle. And if you're looking for a generic, you're looking for some bare minimum standards, you know, the CK4 SAE API donut will work, you know. And that's what I've been using for the longest time. And we get a lot of longevity out of our trucks. That's what we're looking for here. And I hope that's what you're looking for too. And last but not least, another subject for a later date is fuel filters. You know, here in Las Vegas, 
it's a toss of, you know, it's a toss up because we don't know from week to week what's the oil quality, I mean, the fuel quality is going to be. So again, uh, with common rail injection, with issues with CP4 injection pumps and so on, um, you cannot change your fuel filter enough too. So we're recommending the changes of fuel filters every other oil change. Cheap insurance too on a very expensive common rail injection system that can exceed over $7,000. Cheap insurance again is the fuel filters you can change. So. So with that, you got any comments? Give me any comments, but let's be positive about it. We're trying. I know that you're probably saying, you know, that's too little. Well, do whatever the hell you want to do. I don't care. It's your truck. But if you want it to live long time, you want to have less issues with after treatment, then change it periodically and take care of your truck. With that, I hope you understand what I mean well. I hope to see you again another time for our next video. So smile and uh, take care of those trucks. Thanks again.